Hey guys, today I want to talk about furniture. Specifically what I want to talk about is how to take a cheap piece of furniture and turn it into something great. Like I talked about in our previous video, we're trying to sell our condo right now, and in doing so we had two huge wardrobes that were in our bedroom. Our condo has a lot of vertical space, so while we were here what we tried to do was maximize that. We had two large 93 inch tall wardrobes that we used to put clothes and all kinds of other things in. The last thing that a buyer wants to do is come into a bedroom and see two huge refrigerator sized wardrobes on each side of the bed. So we sold those wardrobes on Craigslist and we still need a place to put our clothes. What we did is we went to Ikea and we bought two rast chest of drawers. The rast is a three drawer chest. It's made out of pine and it's unfinished, so you can paint it, do whatever you want. I, I, I say it's made out of pine. It's kind of it's kind of pine-ish, but it, it is solid wood. So we chose to use the rast because of three reasons. The first thing is that it's cheap, which really appeals to me. They're $35 a piece. Uh, we bought two of them. So for less than a fourth of the price of the wardrobes, we were able to purchase two chests. The second reason is they're a lot smaller than the monster wardrobes that we did have. I'm sitting down right now, and you can see the chest behind me. Finished product. It's only a few feet off the ground. Uh, the last reason we got them is because they're very easily modified. If you go on Google, you type in Rast Hack, you'll find a lot of links there for how to modify these things to get what you want. The design that we chose is from a website called For Chic's Sake. I'll have the link down in the, uh, the third floor. So if you go to that website, uh, you'll find a list of instructions and materials that you'll need to modify your RAS to look like the one behind me. If you like that design or you like any of the designs that you see online, um, here are a few tips that we found uh, were helpful when we built ours. All right, so tip number one. The first thing you want to do is you want to assemble everything but the drawers. The reason you don't want to assemble the drawers is because it's going to help you a lot with step number two. Step number two is painting. You're going to want to use three coats of paint on this thing. For ours, we used gloss paint. And what you're going to want to do is first paint the whole thing, paint the drawer heads, paint the whole body, then sand everything down after it dries. Next, paint it again, then sand it again and then paint it a third time. It's going to take at least three coats to cover everything. The next tip has to do with the drawer pulls. You want to make sure that you know what kind of work you're getting yourself into. We ordered campaign chest drawer pulls and these are it here. With the campaign drawer pull, a lot of them require you to recess them into the drawer head and that can be a problem, especially if you don't have a router, which I didn't have. The way we ended up accomplishing this was taking masking tape, putting it on the drawer head, and then laying out the design of what needed to be cut on top of the masking tape. The masking tape is going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to keep the wood from splitting. And the second thing it's going to do is it's going to allow you to remove the template after you're done cutting without having to actually mark on the drawer head itself. What I ended up using to actually cut out the design was a Dremel tool with a high speed cutter on it. Now at first I tried to go straight in with a high speed cutter and all it did was blow smoke everywhere. Uh, but what you want to do is take the high speed cutter, go along the edges of the design that you cut out, and then slowly start to peel away at the layers of the pine until you get the depth you want. And then edge up the sides so your uh, recessed drawer, drawer pull fits nicely into the recess. The fourth tip that I have for you has to do with these uh, corner braces here. The first thing you know about these corner braces is they don't seem to be available at the actual local hardware stores or in this area. We checked Home Depot, we checked Lowe's, uh, even though they're on the Home Depot website, many of the stores don't carry them in these sizes and brass. Instead, they're another color, they're another stain, they're, they're, they're stainless steel, uh, something of that nature, and they're not this size either. So you may have to order them from online. We got them online at Home Depot. The next thing to know about these is that you want to pre-drill the holes for the screws. If you don't do that, you run the risk of splitting the wood as you take and you push the screw through the wood yourself. The next thing is it matters the direction that these braces face. We put together a whole drawer head with these braces on the wrong side and none of the screws were flush against it. Uh, if you take the braces and you turn them over, you'll find out that one side of the braces has a place so that the screws will sit flush with the brace if you turn it the opposite side, the screws won't sit flush and you'll get a lot more rustic look than you bargained for. Finally, don't put in the interior screws of the braces. So what I mean by interior screws are these four screws here, 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 and here. The reason you want to do that is 
you can't put together the rest of the furniture if you put the screws in there. There are little channels in there for some of the uh, IKEA pieces of wood and things so that the drawers fit together correctly. And if those screws are in, you can't completely put the furniture together uh, at the end of this. So leave those screws out, put all the furniture together, put the drawers together, and then go back in. And the last step that you will do is take and put those screws in. One last thought I'll leave you with is if you do live in a small condo or a small apartment like we do, you can complete this project, but you're going to need two things. You're going to need a space to paint uh, for one. We used our kitchen and uh, set up the shelf drawers on top of cups and things so that we could paint around uh, the edges and on top of the drawer heads. The second thing you're going to need is you're going to need a place to route out the drawers. We used the balcony for that um, and routed out everything and then went back with the uh, vacuum cleaner and sucked up any sawdust that was left over. So if you've done an IKEA uh, RAST hack, um, because there's a lot of them out there on the internet, if you found something that was particularly helpful, please leave something down in the comments because I don't think this will be the last IKEA hack that we do, or if you found any particular tool helpful or any kind of technique helpful, I'd really like to know. Please leave your comments or video response. Thanks a lot.